What's up guys, another midterm review question, and this is an object that's gonna be traveling in a horizontal loop. Really hard for me to like draw this in three dimensions. Um, if you've done the flying pig lab, that's kind of what this is representing. So we have some rope that's holding a mass and it's traveling in a horizontal surface at some angle to the horizontal, all right? Where R is towards the center and this is the height above the ground that this object is spinning. And they pretty much wanna know a couple things. If this string were to break and this became a horizontal projectile, how long would it take to hit the ground? How far would it travel? And what would its speed be just before it hits the ground in terms of just H, the height, V naught when it breaks, and little g. Then they wanna also know the forces acting at the position shown and the tension just before it breaks. Okay, so let's first take a look at A. And we know that X equals V naught T plus one half A T squared. And they want to find the time required for the string to break. But now in the Y direction, it has no initial speed. So I could simplify this down and say X equals one half A T squared. The X that it's going to fall is represented by H. The acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, little g. And t. So I can say that the time for this object to hit the ground is simply 2h over g. Done and done. Now for the horizontal distance, we can look at the same kinematic formula, v naught t plus one half a t squared, but the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So that is freaking awesome. So we have x that's going to travel is going to be v naught in the x direction times the t for it to fall, which we just solved for, 2h over g, the square root of that. So once again, I'll write that a little neater. So the distance that's going to go is v naught times the square root of 2h over g. And c, the speed that it's going just before it hits the ground, we'll use one of our final velocities, vf uh, squared equals v naught squared plus 2ax once again, our a is really little g, so we can say that v equals the square root of v naught squared plus 2 little g, and the height, once again, it's going to fall is h. Now, as far as the forces acting on this ball at this particular spot, all we have is fg, and we have the force of tension. That's it. And for part E, though, I'm going to need the components acting on this object. So the force of tension has an X component here, FT, X. And this was at some theta, which is right here. Okay. And it also has an FT, Y. Now, just before the string breaks, it's not moving up or down. So we can say that the force of tension in the y direction equals Fg. And we can also say that Ftx is acting towards the center, and it is the net force or the only force acting towards the center. So that can be called the special name for the net force acting towards the center, which is Fc. Fty is going to be opposite, if I transpose that vector over to here, opposite theta and Ft. So Fty is really just the Ft, the hypotenuse, times the opposite sine theta, which is going to be equal to mg. So the Ft, we could say, is equal to mg over sine theta. If we look at the x direction, we can say that Ftx is going to be the cosine. So that's Ft cosine theta equals mv squared over r. So another expression for Ft could be mv squared over cosine theta r. 